40 years ago this very week, as we approach the 4th of July holiday, we commemorate the 40th anniversary of one of the most heroic and daring rescue miss missions in Jewish history, Operation Thunderbolt. The rescue of 102 hostages from the Entebbe Airport in Uganda. This event in Jewish history marked one of the first examples of the Jewish teaching, Kol Yisrael, of Eirim Zev Zev, that all Israel, that all Jews are responsible for each other. June 27, 1976, an Air France jet with 248 passengers was hijacked by the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. The plane was forced to land at Entebbe Airport where the hijackers, four of them, two Germans, two Palestinians, were welcomed by the Ugandan government led by Idi Amin. The passengers were brought into an unused building within the airport and almost immediately, the Israeli and Jewish passengers were placed in one building and over the next few days, all of the non-Israeli and non-Jewish passengers were released while the Israeli and Jewish passengers were named hostages. And studying this and reading about it and remembering this, it was the Air France crew that chose to stay with the Israelis and the Jewish passengers. They easily could have, could have left. They were told to leave. But the captain of that plane and the crew stayed. And it was during the night of July 3rd, in just 90 minutes, a hundred soldiers of the IDF rescued all of the hostages, an outcome that was nothing short of miraculous. Five Israeli commandos were wounded and one, the commander of the unit, was killed. And we all know that his name was Lieutenant Colonel Yonatan Yoni Netanyahu, the older brother of the current Prime Minister of Israel. Yoni Netanyahu was determined to rescue every last hostage, and he paid the ultimate price by sacrificing his life. His heroism ensured complete success as he had trained his men, his unit, to complete this mission at all costs, even his own life. This year, a delegation from Israel is flying back to Uganda for the first time in many, many years, as the relations now between Israel and Uganda are actually quite peaceful. And the Netanyahu family will be there on July 4th to mark this moment. That moment in history, talk about optimism, that moment in history changed so much. It was the American bicentennial. The whole world was focused on America's 200th birthday. There's a famous story of the editor of the New York Times speaking on a, on a panel and saying, only you guys could ruin our headline. We've been planning that headline for, for 200 years. And we had to change it. Only Israel put up stage that moment. It was 1976, just four years after 11 Israeli athletes were killed in Munich just three years after the Yom Kippur War. And as the clock was ticking, because July 4th, they were gonna start executing passengers one by one, those paratroopers fought all odds and changed the course of our history. In one hour, traveling 2,200 miles with a crazy plan of pretending to be Idi Amin with the the same kind of car and the same kind of Land Rover, with incredible information from the Mossad. They came in, they swept in, and changed the course of history. And so we think about all of those people who changed our lives for the better. We think about peace in the, in the most hopeful sense for us, for Israel, for America, for the streets of Chicago, for our entire world. And we pray more than ever with for peace. Listening to the beauty, beautiful words, Sim Shalom, 
grant us peace, your most precious gift. The beautiful words of Julie Silver in a special request by Orna to offer this song. May peace truly come to us.